You're listening to the Friends Talking Nerdy Podcast Network. Friends Talking Nerdy! If your friends are nerdy and you are nerdy And take two. <laughs> this is the podcast making public transit take and kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing, son of a gun, Tim the Nerd, welcoming you to another episode of Friends Talking Nerdy. Thank you for starting your week off with us. And sitting next to me, we have the vacation queen. <laughs> we have the greatest legal mind of the Pacific Northwest, Professor Aubrey. How you doing? I am so good, Tim. All right. As you mentioned, I'm the vacation queen. And while I do know people who travel and have vacations more than I do, I do travel a lot. So I just got back from a trip to the San Juan Islands. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely beautiful there. And if people don't know, it's it's a set of islands in the Salish Sea which is the huge um, sort of Puget Sound opens up into the Salish Sea. It's very close to Vancouver Island, and it's right on the Canadian border. So I had such a wonderful time there and got to do some interesting things. I went whale watching, but we didn't see any whales. Oh. Yeah, but we saw seals and sea lions and a bald eagle and some other cool stuff. I remember that restaurant we went to uh, in Astoria that we were walking by this pier and it was at night and it was, I think it was the sea lions or something like that, but it was just a whole bunch of them like, ooh, 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 and they're all talking to each other. It was great. Yeah, those are stellar sea lions, and they have moved considerable over the last decade or so from San Francisco more to areas in the Pacific Northwest. Mm-hmm. So it's an interesting shift. And and these is the same way. I think there are many more stellar sea lions in the San Juans now than there used to be. Because climate change! Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so I also went, um, you know, saw some great views and, you know, had a really nice time with my family on, you know, the waterfront there. Now, on in our first attempt at, at uh, recording here, you mentioned a uh, level one and a level two type of vacation, and you were you had a great explanation for level one until unfortunately we got cut off here. So, go over that again. Level one and level two. Okay, so I, I say type 1 and type 2. Type 1 and type 2, okay. So type 1 fun is the fun that is fun in the moment. And it's fun in your memory. Type 2 fun is the type of fun that you have to work for. Mm. That you don't necessarily enjoy when it's happening. But you know you'll enjoy it after the fact. Your feelings of accomplishment and conquering whatever it was you had to conquer will really energize you and feel even better than type one fun. So it's like you gotta pay to pay to have you gotta pay for the big payoff. But that's not to say type one fun is not fun. It's still it's still a type of fun. Interesting theory there. Yeah. So this was more of a type one vacation. Nothing wrong with it. After a very type two vacation at Burning Man. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you had a hotel, you had room service, right? <laughs> Not exactly. We rented a house. Oh. Because there were four of us, so. Gotcha. Nothing wrong with that. And you definitely had fun, and you will be off on another vacation here tomorrow. <laughs> um, that's right. I will mm-hmm. be going to the Newberry Volcanic National Monument. Ooh. which is in central Oregon. It's one of the youngest volcanoes in the Cascade Crest. We're going to do some hiking around a lake. There's a hot springs. There's a lava tube. 
there's a snow cave or an ice cave. There's just all kinds of weird things there to mm. see. So, taking a couple of days to do that. That definitely, definitely sounds like fun. So, sounds like fun. That would be a type two trip for me, and probably one I wouldn't like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's a type two trip for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, t- wanted to start off on a bit of a happy foot because we do got some sad news here. I'm going to start off by saying, "Fuck cancer." Yeah, fuck cancer. Yeah, um, kind of seems like yesterday that I was creating the bonus episode, letting the world know that my friend Stephanie passed away from uterine cancer, and. Now, um, and, and she's, this person I'm going to be talking about has talked about this on her social media, and I've already shared uh, some information on my social media about this, but uh, Jennifer Lumley, friend of the show, um, if you listen <laughs> back, yeah, yeah, if you listen back to some of our book club episodes, she was uh, a part of a number of them, and uh, was great each and every time she, she came on the show, she's always been, you know, was very kind to me, um, you know, and, and stuff like that, but she has cancer. It's, it's so sad, I'm very, I'm obviously very concerned about her, and wishing her the absolute best, it's just... You know, like you said, fuck cancer. Yeah. Um, I mean, she's got some things in her favor, and the most important being that she's 34. You know, I mean, apart from the cancer, my understanding is that she was in relatively good health, too. So, you know, that's another, you know, positive, I think, in terms of uh, outlook. But we've talked many, many times on this show about the American healthcare system. And, you know, you know, Jennifer being a former co-worker of mine, I know how, how much she makes and the fact that she's making, uh, roughly of course, but um, I, the fact that she's now making just 80% of her salary because she has to have time off of work, she needs some some support. So she and a friend did set up a GoFundMe page, um, and I will put the link to that GoFundMe page uh, in the show description here. And I do ask that if you are a listener to this show of any importance, you know, and to, whether it be a new listener, or older listener, or whatever check out that link support financially if you can um, but if you cannot uh, signal boosting is a great way to put it out there because maybe you can't but maybe someone you know could you know chip in five ten bucks because that you know every little bit counts and ultimately too what i hate about this is the fact that this is just another example of how messed up our healthcare system is it is a joke yeah and you know our whole system all of our systems are pretty fucked up at this point. Mm-hmm. Healthcare in particular. And of course, it's highlighted when people that we know are experiencing getting cancer. And I just know so many people at this point that are have gotten cancer or who, who and have survived it. Mostly, I think everybody I know personally has survived. So we know there's great medical advancements, but I think what you're saying is that's great for there to be medical advancements, but if somebody can't afford to live while they're being treated, how can the treatment be effective? Yeah, I mean, there was a video that Vice had on their TikTok that had a guy that brought uh, an insurance company to court because they were, this is one of the few people that had the financial resources to do that, brought them to court because they refused a medication of his. And in discovery, was able to get some audio recordings of phone calls these uh, insurance agents uh, were saying to each other about this particular case, and the insurance agents were laughing that they they refused this guy's medicine. They were laughing about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, just, this is a sick, sick system that, you know, I, I think that, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I, it was like a domino, one of the dominoes, the early dominoes that fell that kind of started turning me away from religion. You know, when I was in church in my 20s talking about, you know, I, I don't think a person that gets cancer should have to go into bankruptcy. The response I got from one of the churchgoers was, well, how are the doctors supposed to be paid? I mean, they're doing pretty well in England, you know, (laughs) with what we consider socialized medicine, and they're getting their money, and that doesn't stop, you know, people from having their own practices to where if they wanted to go to their own private doctor, they could still do that too, you know, but... 
I, something has to change, and I, if the political scene in Washington keeps staying the way it is for the foreseeable future, it's not going to. And yeah, I mean, nothing productive is going to happen. Yeah, I mean, unless you're Lauren Boebert at a Beetlejuice musical performance. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, um, best of luck to Jennifer, and um, we wish you all the best. Yeah, and like I said, too, uh, check the show description. I will have the link for the GoFundMe there. Even just signal boosting it is going to be a help because, again, if you are not financially able to help out, that doesn't mean you don't know someone that, that can. Um, Jen is, if you want to, I'll also put in uh, links to uh, her YouTube show, uh, Comics Will Break Your Heart. She, oh, um, great. The, it, the, it's been a bit of a hiatus, which, understandably, um, for medical reasons and whatnot, but uh, she has uh, plenty of older episodes uh, in her uh, YouTube archive that I definitely recommend people checking out. I mean, because, um, you know, it's like what we were talking about uh, kind of last week in terms of the comics. You know, she is great at finding those comics that are not, you know, buff superheroes that, you know, take all the, you know, steroids they can or something like that. You know, I mean, she's... Uh, th- uh, check out her show. Right, that's, you know... It's so great to have those kinds of resources, um, like her show, to mm-hmm. try and figure out what are some things you might like to to read. And that's the thing with comics. I mean, even today, with the prevalence of comic book movies being what they are, the average casual person who maybe had a comic book in in elementary school or or whatnot are still only going to know about the big two um, companies, Marvel and DC. And it's you're missing out on so much more uh, great stories that are out there. And, you know, Jennifer's show is is a great way to kind of get some eyes on some material that maybe you wouldn't wouldn't have crushed your radar. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. All right. So thank you all for listening to that plea. And again, if you can, support financially or at the very least, signal boost. She's good people. She needs the help. Speaking of person who doesn't need the help... Fuck on winner. Right? He is absolute human garbage in, in so many ways. Now, some people at home may be asking, who is Jan Winner? Who's Jan Winner? Who's Jan Winner? Jan Winner uh, created Rolling Stone magazine. Um, was yep. one of their first, you know, big names, uh, writers on the magazine and an editor as well. Um, he also created the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, recently, uh, a couple of days ago, he had an interview with the New York Times concerning a book of interviews that he compiled um, that, that he did with uh, artists and whatnot, and he called it The Masters. And the list of masters that he included, take a guess how many, how many um, white guys were on there. Like, on everyone. Top. Yes. All of them. Yep. It, it, the usual suspects. And, 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 and as far as interviews go, uh, you know, the, the, they're not bad subjects to interview, but we're talking the usual Jagger, Pete Townsend, Bruce Springsteen, Bono, white guys all around. And the person who interviewed him um, <laughs> asked the question, you know, why only white guys? And, you know, he had a couple of interesting things to say. Um, finding the quote right here, like um, in terms of black artists, he goes, a black artist, you know, Stevie Wonder, genius, right? I suppose when you use a word as broad as masters, the fault is using that word. Maybe Marvin Gaye or Curtis Mayfield. I mean, they just don't articulate at that level the level of the white guy he said this about women um it's not that they're inarticulate although go have a deep conversation with grace slick or janice joplin please be my guest you know Joni mitchell was not a philosopher of rock and roll she didn't in my mind meet that test wow yeah and um because of those comments uh he was kicked off the board of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Excellent. So, good thing there. But we, I got two talking points here. One, the, the first is d- d- the direct comments that he made. Fucking ignorant. And, and totally wrong. And it shows 
the damage that one single singular figure, in this case, he represents Rolling Stone magazine, you know, how Rolling Stone magazine for the longest time dictated what was considered good and what was considered bad. Which is why other magazines came along. Uh, they did Spin have... Spin magazine, for example. But... And I get that. There are other ones out there, yes. But the number one but on I'm the market is going to be Rolling Stone. Yes, I know. I yeah. know. But I'm just saying it was so dominated that we know what few co- competitors they had that got a national audience. Mm-hmm. And there weren't many. No. And, yeah. And when you have someone that is that open about the, what they... The, the, he, he feels his view on rock and roll is rock and roll. And as we can see by his comments here, that is anything but correct. I mean, Jimi Hendrix didn't have some great interviews. Joni Mitchell... And, and come on, I'm not a huge Joni Mitchell fan at all. But to say she is inarticulate? What the fuck? And then in Right. Ahead. I mean, one of her albums, Blue, articulates the experience of love and loss more beautifully than any other album I know. Uh, And he also mentioned Grace Slick and Janis Joplin. I mean, Grace Slick has stories to tell. I mean, from the good good and the bad of what rock and roll can offer. I mean, would I have loved to hear hear her thoughts, for example, on... Because I don't think I've heard her thoughts on what happened at Altamont. Um, Because she was... Jefferson Airplane was one of the bands that played at Altamont on the day day that uh, an audience member was stabbed during the Rolling Stones set. Mm-hmm. Um, but come on, inarticulate. The woman who wrote White, White Rabbit is inarticulate. And Janis Joplin, one of the most soulful singers in rock history, didn't have stories to tell. She's inarticulate. I mean. Well, you know, maybe the Joplin thing, I can see her just being so fucked up that she couldn't make herself intelligible. Well, in terms of drug use, yeah, but think of all the times that they verbally filleted Kurt Cobain. And if anybody had a drug habit, I mean, it was him. I mean, let's be honest here. Let's call a spade a spade. You know, they've had plenty of white guys that have done horrible things and have done all the drugs you can think of, and they're still elevated to the hero status. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, which kind of pulling back to a little further, not from this particular issue, but pulling back again, it shows the danger of having one person, in this case, Jan Winter, representing Rolling Stone, having that much influence because he pulls the same shit with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know, I mean, the monkeys aren't in. You have very little female representation, even though, you know, based on that uh, documentary we saw, um, you know, you have, who was that? Oh, I forgot her name. The Sister. Sister Rosetta Tharp invented how rock guitar was made, but she's, I, I don't think she's in. And you got plenty of other female artists that deserve to be... I mean, Pat Benatar just got in. Ridiculous. And again, this just infuriates me so much because the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and for its faults, is a great way to keep the discussion going on older artists. But when you have such a clear bias as to having people and this kind of shows too why they would go and start you know getting country artists and and inducting them as well because if he thinks rock and roll is only your Bruce Springsteen's or your Mick Jagger's or something like that there aren't many out there these days you know right because there's such a great um, diversity of music now Mm -hmm. people can actually listen to what they like they're not forced into just rock and roll just pop just R&B, just soul, whatever you want to listen to, all mixed up together, you can listen to it. I, I'm, I hope I hope he goes away. I, I mean, he's off the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but hopefully that's a permanent thing and not like a, hey, we'll, we'll kick you off for six months and when this blows over, we'll bring you back. Yeah. You know, which that wouldn't shock me either, but, you know. Well, since we're talking about assholes, mm-hmm. have you heard anything about Russell Brand? 
I've heard a little bit. I mean, I've, he's not somebody that's ever been on my radar, um, but I did hear that like he came out with this important message, like, there's going to be news tomorrow about me, and, and don't believe it. I swear, don't believe it. <laughs> you know, and it turned out he has some credible accusations of sexual misconduct uh, against him now innocent until proven guilty let it go through the investigation process and if he is found innocent great you there are enough stories about his behavior out there that makes me think yeah he probably did <laughs> you know? yeah i mean i used to love russell brand i used to love him as an actor i thought he was very funny as a comedian mm-hmm. and i thought he was sexy you know But I can totally see how his ego was so huge, maybe is still so huge, Mm -hmm. that he thought all people were just there for him, just there for him. I mean, he was married to Katy Perry. He had, you know, he had a lot of sex. And his response to these accusations was to say... Well, I never lied about the fact that I was a womanizing sexual being, but I didn't do anything non-consensually. And I don't get that argument out either. You know, like, are there anecdotal examples of women out there that completely lied about a, a sexual assault experience? I'm sure there are. But on the flip side, you know, like, you know, being polyamorous, and knowing people that are polyamorous, you know, you can have all the sex you want without being a scumbag. Yeah. You know, um, there shouldn't be any sort of questioning after the fact. Because, yeah, at minimum, the, if you're looking at the, in this potential situation here from the most positive intent possible, to your point, maybe he didn't read signals because he thought I'm Russell Brand and I can get what I want and they're going to be excited to be with me. Right. You know, and that's the most positive intent here. I'm not saying that that is necessarily what happened here, but, you know, uh, let the investigation process do its thing. Oh, for sure. For Mm. sure. I just think, you know, where I stopped hanging with Russell was when he started doing lots of podcasts. Mm-hmm. about conspiracy theories, particularly against him, and sort of debunking things about him. And then it sort of grew into him giving his political opinion about everything. Yeah, because we need to know. <laughs> and people responded to that, I guess, because he kept doing it and people kept talking about what he had said. That does remind me. But I was like, I don't like my entertainers to then tell me what what I should think about things. Because I don't even know them. I know characters that they've played. Yeah. I, it also goes to show, too, about his quote-unquote innocence when you have, you know sterling examples of humanity like alex jones coming out in support of him alex jones came out in support of him yep what did alex jones say um paraphrasing here uh his the statement is out there but you know he, he said i don't believe it i think it's the far right or the far left uh trying to get him because he's exposed exposing the truth of the globalist and i've seen all kinds of women throw themselves at him that was essentially what he had to say. Wow, I've seen lots of women throw themselves at him. And so that means he can have sex with whoever he wants to have sex with, whether they say yes or no or nothing at all. Power corrupts. Money and power will, will corrupt a person to where you know they think that all of their carnal, piggish desires should be satisfied. And, you know... Th- this sounds like a case that where where that has happened here. Yeah. Um, uh, again, the investigation will play play its course, fully support it, and if it comes out that he is absolutely innocent, we'll be the first to bring it up here on the show. Um, absolutely, keep it tuned. Friends talking nerdy for all all the breaking entertainment news. Exactly, exactly. But you know, this kind of ties in with our main theme here. And that is celebrities that we irrationally hate. Now, 
on TikTok, I made a video, um, uh, I stitched a video with somebody that was talking about Rob Schneider, and I made the comment, uh, something along the lines of thinking that it was funny that uh, an act, a person like him who has benefited the most from welfare in Hollywood is now a conservative comic. <laughs> and over 116,000 people have watched it so far and counting. Wow, 116,000 people. They have taken time out of their day to hear me rip into Rob Schneider. So <laughs> he will probably uh, block me on TikTok now. He had me blocked on Twitter when we had Twitter. <laughs> 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 But that made me think about celebrities that we irrationally hate. Everybody has has one of them, whether it be somebody that they liked at one time, like a Russell Brand who went off the rails, or just somebody whose mere presence, the first moment you came across them, made you want to throw something at the TV. <laughs> yes. And I think that... Most people feel that way about Rob Schneider. But I have a Rob Schneider story, actually. Oh, what's the Rob Schneider story? So, I had a friend whose sister worked at a very fancy seaside restaurant in Dana Point, California, Mm -hmm. which is a very Orange County kind of place. Mm -hmm. And lots of celebrities live there. And so, Rob Schneider would come into this very fancy restaurant and um, flirt with all the waitresses or all the servers and um, always be kind of sleazy around the bar and stuff, assuming that because he was famous that anybody would have anything to do with him. And then he would stiff the servers and not even tip them well. So I have a rational reason to hate Rob Schneider. Yeah, and, and th- th- let me clarify, too, the welfare comment. You know, the, th- the common thing that most people say about him is that the only reason he has a career is that he's friends with Adam Sandler. And for, if you look back through his IMDb credits, that is mostly true. Most of his work uh, put out was produced by the, the Happy Gilmore Production, Sandler's production company. Really? The sausage one? Uh, what one are you talking about? The sausage one? Uh-huh. What sausage one? <laughs> I I think I'm confused with a South Park episode. <laughs> Maybe. Rob Schneider, easy steep. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, but, you know, he and, and someone may come at me like, you know, well, Rob Schneider had some movies like Deuce Bigelow. And, again, I'm sure they made money. I'm not discounting the fact that he's made a, money for studios. He's got enough money to live in, near Dana Point. So that he's got money. Yeah, and it's just the thing is... People were going because they knew Sandler produced it, and Sandler has a particular style. People go to those types of movies knowing the type of humor. They're not going for the personality per se. They're getting a particular type of humor with an Adam Sandler production, and Rob Schneider gave it to him. And, you know, I'm not saying he shouldn't work. Everybody should get a job. And if I had a Hollywood friend that was that said, hey, Tim, do you want to be in my movie? I would be the first one to say, yeah. Yes, I love you, you know, type of deal. But, like, recognize, <laughs> recognize your actual status. You know, and, and we're talking about a douchebag that on Saturday Night Live only had that, oh, Mickey Guppies, the <laughs> most fucking ignorant. It's like, uh, it, it, it makes the, you know, you might be a redneck jokes look like a George Carlin monologue. Wow, you really don't like Rob Schneider. Uh, there is a number of Saturday Night Live people I don't like, but I thought what we would do is get a list of our five, uh, five celebrities that we just don't like at all. Gotcha. All right. Did you want to start us off? I will. All right. And I'm going to start with a controversial figure, right. Gwyneth Paltrow. She's one of those people like a Russell Brand. Like at one point, I used to think she was a pretty good actress, not the absolute best in the world, but... She started doing little things like, uh, like she would like put, put out tweets like, "I bought the week's equivalent of what poor people have to buy, and I'm living on that to see what it's like to be poor." And it's like, "Fuck you," <laughs> you know? right? And then, but so somehow she did it because she had time to do all kinds of research and look up recipes and find the best place to buy everything. I'm sure she did a great job of providing healthy meals or whatever. Yeah. But, like, it still ignores the reality of people's lives. Yep. 
anyway, so she started doing stuff like that, and then she started proselytizing about it, and even created her own little group that was toxically positive and toxically oblivious to the problems that are actually facing the world right now, but wanted to wants to sort of take credit for being socially responsible. Yeah, and she started selling supplements too. And the, scary. The funny, or maybe not so funny uh, thing about that is the company that she uses that makes those supplements also makes the, the supplements that Alex Jones hawks on his show. Of course. Yeah, you know so. Yeah, she's, again, there was a point to where I could have tolerated her, but she's just one of those rich pieces of garbage that just has no basis of what reality really is. I got no problem with people that, through their work, were able to, um, you know, amass a a decent-sized fortune. I'm not against the idea of rich people. I'm against the idea of people like this who... (laughs) don't ever want to have their lives impacted in any way, shape, or form and just are just absolute garbage people. You know, I'm going to disagree with you there, surprisingly. And I'm going to say, I don't like rich people. I think to get rich or to continue to be rich in the system that exists today means you're not doing it right. Like, if you have resources, now is the time to share them, Mm -hmm. not hoard them. Indeed. Speaking of, I'll go to my first choice here, Miss Oprah Winfrey. Oh. Someone, like, to be a billionaire, you have to be a bad person. I, you know, what that's what I was just saying. I know that that's why I, I chose this choice first here. But you know, she has a long, long history of being an arrogant, elitist snob who thinks that her opinion really matters, you know. And the latest example is the fire in Maui. You know, her and The Rock, and sad to say The Rock was a part of this, but her and The Rock made a TikTok video where she was begging people to to give money to a fund that her and The Rock came, came, you know, came forward with without giving any money on her own. And there was somebody who made a retort video to what she said, uh, a Hawaiian native. Um, was talking about how Oprah was able to get 400 acres of land in in Maui through for pennies on the dollar through shady uh, shady uh, business deals. Mm. Um, also had a private security firm on her land during the fire, keeping people off of her property. The people that she wanted, just the average poor people, to you know chip in uh, to support and just all around bad person. Just again. She's the type of person that someone in Iowa that is a conservative is going to look at and associate with all of progressives out there. And that is an absolute shame and an absolute crime. So, here's my question for you. Mm -hmm. Oprah does have an audience. People do listen to her. And they listen to her opinions, which is why books that she recommends are always in the bestsellers. Like, all has to happen is Oprah has to bless whatever it is that you've done, and you're automatically very popular. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you say she, you know, she thinks her opinion matters, well, her opinion does matter. Some people base their opinions on her. That's on them, though. Uh, Yeah, I'm not... I'm talking in the grand scheme of things, not the fact that she can get an audience to, you know, listen to, you know, whatever stupid thing comes out of her mouth, you know? And look at the people she's endorsed in the past. Dr. Phil, Dr. Oz, two complete, absolute scumbag Oh, yeah, beings. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying she has wielded her authority or power or appeal mm-hmm. appropriately. I'm agreeing with you entirely. But I'm just... Is my... You, my just the way you said it, I'm just being argumentative. That's why I love This you. is one of those times, <laughs> right? Going to keep me on my toes. Right. I was just, you know, it, she hasn't wielded that audience well, but she does have an audience, which makes it even worse because she could 
be doing good things. She could, but, you know, I, I would probably... The, I, I don't know the demographics, and if I'm proven wrong, then I will fully admit I'm wrong. But I, I would be shocked if the majority of her audience weren't all financially well-to-do people. Oh, right. People that kind of live in their own weird reality compared to what reality really is for the average person out there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. When Oprah first came out, I used to watch her when I was a preteen and teenager. Mm-hmm. I loved her. Roger Ebert dated her for a while. What? In the 80s, yeah. Wow. What an odd couple. <laughs> But apparently he's the one who encouraged her to, um, like, get her own show or whatever. So he's the one to thank you, Roger Ebert. <laughs> it's Thanks, awesome. Roger. Um, but, I, yeah, she. I, I just I, I just can't stand her because, it's to me, celebrities like her do far more damage than they do help. And, and to be clear, I'm not going to play naive. I'm sure she does a lot of great work with certain things somewhere. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying she's an evil, manipulative you know, person or anything like that. That, but she's someone who has, since at least the '80s, has not experienced anything, re- anything resorting normal per people problems. Right. Sure. You know, and she's so far removed from knowing what the struggle is for the average person that she doesn't realize that her putting a foot in her mouth is going to cause more harm than good to the people that she supports. And that's the sad part here. I have no doubt that in her heart, she thinks she's doing good, but at the end of the day, she's just like any other rich person doing what she can to protect herself. And if she can help others along the way, great. Which brings up Drew Barrymore. Mm -hmm. Not on my list of irrational hatred (laughs) because you know, she was an ET and it's very hard to let go of that attachment to her. But anyway. Gertie, no. Gertie, don't do it. Um, anyway, she kind of was in a similar situation as Oprah, I think, in that she decided that her show was so important to people's lives that it should go forward, even though there was a strike, that the goodness of her show and the important social whatever or psychological or whatever she thinks is giving people is more important than the livelihoods of working people yeah i mean luckily drew barrymore ended up changing her tune and is going to wait until the strike is resolved uh from last i heard but this, even i can tell you from doing this podcast you know not having some form of a structure just leads you nowhere I mean, what was she going to do f- to fill an hour's time? You know, <laughs> like I remember on E.T. I mean, <laughs> you know? I don't even know what her show is about. It does have its own channel on Pluto TV. It's just a normal daytime talk show. It's just a daytime talk show. Yeah, like Ellen or something like that. The goofy little interviews. and it's Yeah, she's not going to be the next Edward R. Murrow. Or okay, anything gotcha, like that. gotcha. It could be wrong, but hey, you know. I mean, and, and I, I, I can... She, she is another instance, too, of, you know, someone think, not thinking about the big picture because, yeah, I think she probably thought, you know, oh, I mean, she probably does have people that, that she has on her show that, you know, are not earning salary right now that she wanted to help out. I, I can see that. But again, you got to think of the bigger picture here. Yeah. Yeah. All Absolutely. Right. What's okay, so my next person is Mel Gibson. Ugh. Who doesn't hate Mel Gibson? Catholics. <laughs> I mean, he's just become a Catholic... Fanboy? Fanboy, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Like, I, you know, what is the Pope, like, filleting him every night when he goes home or letting him come over to the Vatican and sleep You're with him? You're a nasty Pope. You're a nasty Pope. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Mel Gibson is just wildly um, inappropriate, and he wasn't always that way. And I think he, just like all these other people we're talking about, it's the farther removed you get from normal people, typical people, average people, 
median people, the more outrageous your thoughts become. This might also be a situation, too, of we don't know Mel Gibson personally. All we know him from are his movies or the interviews he's done um, or the guest star spots he's done on TV shows or whatnot. We don't know him personally, and there have been plenty of... Look at Bill Cosby, most extreme example. The public image put out made him seem like a great guy. Behind the scenes, not so much. Well, that's very common. It's not super common for people to be villainized in the press and then turn out to be really nice people. Um, okay, Mel Gibson. I think enough said on Mel Gibson. Like, he's done so many wild things. Yeah, I mean, like, the almost unrepentant. Uh, yeah, he was unrepentant for, like, the abuse he did towards a girlfriend. I mean, they had she had to, to publicly release these phone recordings that she made of him making, uh, like, racial comments towards her and just, I'm going to do this to you and do that to you. And it's just... I, it's sad because he's a great actor. Yeah. You know, and like, uh, you know, it, it, everybody has their own line of demarcation with people. So if there are people out there that can still watch Lethal Weapon, good for you. But yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Shall I go on? Yes, please. All right. This guy. I've hated for a long time, but I I will give a disclaimer here um, that, you know, by all accounts in real life, you know, if the image is true, he's pretty much a nice guy. And in that if I met him in person, I probably wouldn't have anything really bad to say about him. I just don't like his image. I don't like him. I don't like his voice. Who is it? Who is it? He has a punchable face. Uh, Will Ferrell. Oh, right. Just... He came on the Saturday Night Live, and that was it for me, uh, you know, and which was sad because he came on the show like right around the time Norm Macdonald was doing Weekend Update, and Norm Macdonald was probably one of the best Weekend Update people, like um, the day, the, uh, the the week that they had the OJ verdict, you know, and he, his Norm Macdonald's line was, um, well, this week, murder was legalized in California, <laughs> <laughs> and, and just stuff like that, but uh, Will Ferrell, I've always always disliked him i mean i think it really started when i saw gene silent bob strike back in theaters mm. when you know, just he he's comes from that group of people it seems like that there is a concerted group of people that do uh, endorse that whole idea of improvising everything mm-hmm. and you know if it works for you great but it has never ever worked for me and i'll tell you how petty i can be Um, you are aware that there was the HBO show Winning Time about the Lakers. Yep. Yep. And that was uh, produced by a guy named Adam McKay, who was Will Ferrell's uh, producing partner. At one point, Will Ferrell had interest to play uh, Jerry Buss um, on the show, but Adam had second thoughts and offered the role to John C. Riley, And that ended Adam McKay and Will Ferrell's production partnership and friendship. Mm. And when I heard that news, I immediately started watching the show. Right. Because I thought that if I could help make that show popular, it would drive a further wedge between the two, and I would be so happy. (laughs) That's how bad of a human being I can be for somebody whose only crime is just making jokes that I don't find is funny. (laughs) Let's be honest here. It's irrational. I get it. I get it. I really do. Um, I liked him. Mm -hmm. I liked him when he was doing, like, the cheerleader skit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was just goofy, but high energy and great at improv. Great at improv. Um, But then in his movies, it's like it became long form improv, which I have never found entertaining. Yeah, I can't sit. Like the comedies from the 2000s and the 2010s, I can't sit through. Yeah. You know, like the Judd Apatow stuff. No, I like the Judd Apatow stuff. And I like the Wes Anderson stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Still, though, just fuck Will Ferrell. (laughs) Who's next on your list? Okay, we're going to go to a controversial one, I think, you know. uh, And it is any Kardashian. Any of them. Now, in my research for this episode, I did go and look at some lists of most hated celebrities. Mm Mm-hmm. 
which are available on the internet. And you can just go through them and pick your own five most hated <laughs> celebrities. It's a fun little exercise. But anyway, it started with Kim, who was very near the top of the list. But then you get down into Courtney and Kayla or whatever their names are. All the other K Kardashians. And they're all on the list, but it's interesting to see which ones are higher on the list. And I'm like, they're all kind of terrible in the same way. Yeah. And uh, just that whole family. I mean, like their father who passed away was OJ's friend and helped get the dream team of lawyers together and only started having doubts about OJ after after the not guilty verdict. <laughs> You know, right? It's like wow, um, just horrible, horrible people, horrible, horrible people. I mean, I am lucky in the fact that I have never seen one episode, even in passing, of any of the Kardashian shows. I haven't either. Yeah, but just their whole personality, because it reminds me of something Bill Maher said. But even though Bill Maher is a scab bastard too. Um, but he was talking about back in the day when like Paris Hilton was first getting famous and he made a comment, you know, at least Britney Spears does something. <laughs> what does Paris Hilton do? <laughs> you know? Right. Type of deal. And, and, and it's kind of the same thing. Like the Kardashians were just manufactured. They didn't do anything. I mean, well, Kim Kardashian did that porn before she got famous, but that's a different story. <laughs> they didn't do anything <laughs> except that. Yeah, you know. But uh, whatever works, and, and I, 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 I don't know, maybe it's just this over abundance of celebrity stories about how rich they are just makes it to where I really don't care about people like that anymore. And if they you know, went away, darn, you know? Right. Yeah. Sure. There's lots of great entertainment out there that doesn't involve them. Th- thank goodness. Yeah. She did uh, guest uh, ring announcer role at a WrestleMania once. Kim Kardashian did. Whoa! Yeah, Undertaker couldn't choke slam her that day, unfortunately. Oh, I wish she had. <laughs> yeah, shall I go on? Yes, please. What's your next? My next one is a guy I've hated since 1992. Hulk Mr. Hogan. Jay Leno. <laughs> Jay Leno. <laughs> fucking piece of garbage human being um the reason i started hating him in 92 was about how he got the seat on the tonight show when johnny carson was set to retire he wanted david letterman you Mm -hmm. know he groomed david letterman because he was the original he made sure that david letterman had the you know after his failed morning show um he had the late night show after uh the tonight show because he was being groomed to take over but NBC wanted a glad-handing, big-chin bastard just that would verbally fillet each and every executive uh, doing, you know, and doing what they want, hiding in closets and listening to them to get, uh, you know, information and stuff like that. Um, and he also had an agent at the time that was rather ruthless. And what really set me off was how his whole idea his whole way of ex- explaining it was I, I didn't know what she was doing I didn't mean to hurt people and like fuck you like you know someone's reputation when you hire them you, at that level and he knew she was being cutthroat and just let her take the fall mm-hmm just and there's that but then of course we go to the 2010s you know nbc didn't want a repeat of what happened in 92 so they when they re-upped jay leno and conan o'brien's uh contracts they said you know after five years uh, jay leno will retire and conan o'brien will take over the tonight show great but then what nbc did is they got cold feet mm. once that five years came about what they decided to do was keep jay leno on the air but have a completely separate show called the Jay Leno Show at Monday through Friday from 10 o'clock till 11. And then Conan O'Brien would take over the Tonight Show. And what happened is that people didn't want to see a late night talk show at 10 o'clock at night. No. Yeah. And they ended up losing a lot of money and losing a lot of the audience that would have potentially have been there for the Tonight Show. 
you know, because if they're off watching other things anyway, they're not necessarily going to turn back. So NBC wanted to boot Conan on, on from the Tonight Show starting at 1130 and have it started at about 12 o'clock, which Conan O'Brien was like, why call it the Tonight Show then? It's not the Tonight Show. If it's, it's the tomorrow. morning show. Yeah. And ultimately, Jay Leno weaseled his way back in, into the Tonight Show seat again. And Conan O'Brien was essentially fired. You know, I mean, the beautiful thing about that is that the last few weeks of uh, the Conan O'Brien's Tonight Show were some of the most vicious comedy. Like, he had these bits of, you know, since they're firing me anyway, I'm going to spend all kinds of money buying this Picasso painting and then throwing mud on it. (laughs) (laughs) But but it turned out that, you know, that was just a goof. It was just a skit. You know, he wasn't really throwing away money, but just... Uh, you know, and and the Conan O'Brien because of this was able to go out on tour, and I saw him live. Oh, nice! So there was that. So thanks to Jay Leno, I had that opportunity. But um, just no, I had no respect for him, and I've never thought him to be funny at all. Like he doesn't have jokes with punchlines. It's just <laughs> he tries to sell a joke. <laughs> anyway. That's a very good impersonation. <laughs> okay, sure, next stop doing it now. Okay, this one might be controversial. Um, this is John Mayer. Mm. John Mayer, hate him, hate him. I hate him because everybody loves him, and I haven't ever like consumed anything that he's done. Um, but I just hated the way that everybody loved him. <laughs> He just pops on the scene and everybody loves him. I can see that. I mean, I think he would come around like in your mid-20s, right? Right. Yeah, and you've already had a much established history of what music is. So him being a young guy and people falling on... You know, I, I get that. It's like me hearing people talk about Greta Van Fleet. You know, ooh, they're like Led Zeppelin. And I'm like, they're no Led Zeppelin. <laughs> right, totally. I mean, I've also heard Greta Van Fleet compared to like Janis Joplin. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't I don't hate that band, Greta Van Fleet. I actually like them, but I'm indifferent. But you know, I'm just more of a they're no Led Zeppelin. How dare you compare them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was sort of that thing with me and John Mayer. Like he was a a folk pop guy, and there were so many folk pop guys. Like think of all the colleges all throughout the country of guys that played folk pop to get laid exactly it was like he was the one of all of them all of whom were my lover (laughs) he was the one of them that got through Mm. and you know it wasn't my friend or my friends right so Mm. um i hated him still do understandable i mean did you that's the most irrational one i've got yeah. Did you ever see his uh, guest spot on the Chappelle show? No. Yeah. Uh, Dave Chappelle brought him. It was um, a sketch that they did about how different types of music makes uh, different racial groups react in different ways. Mm. And like they went to like a mainly Spanish place and played salsa music and um, they played funk music in a black barbershop and, and whatnot. And then at the end, you know, they started playing like every rose has its its thorn. But then one black cop, you know, is dancing along with it. And Dave Chappelle's like, what the hell? So, and the guy's like, I grew up in the suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there is that. But I, I can also see, too, you being upset that Mayor uh, was, is involved um, or if they're still around, but was involved with Dead & Company. Yeah. Whoa. Yes. Yeah, like he doesn't deserve that spot. How dare he? <laughs> right, it was like he just walked into a, a spot on, in the Grateful Dead. Like, what? You're no Jerry Garcia. Yeah. Although, you know, Donna Jean Gotcha, I will go to my grave saying that she is the worst singer in the world. And how did she ever end up in that band? I don't know. <laughs> okay, who's your next one? My next one, this guy is a great actor. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. He's been involved in Oscar winning films. But he has shown throughout his entire life, he thinks life is a party. Charlie Sheen. Oh, God. Like, if you see his work, like in Platoon or Wall Street, and then you see him today, like, what the hell happened? Too many drugs. Exactly. I mean, he's one of those people, too, like, 
uh, you know, if he in the future somehow gets straight and gets going again, I mean, uh, I would be the sort of like Robert Downey Jr. Exactly, I would be the first to celebrate it because he is a great actor. But uh, again, just he has no care about anybody but his own pleasures. Again, another rich person who has way too much money and just doesn't live in a reality that the everyday person understands. You know. Right, which is something I've always loved about... Who's the Curb Your Enthusiasm guy? Larry David. Larry David. Um, is that he was... he? It took him a long time to make it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I've always thought he was probably a pretty ordinary guy. I, I mean, you would have to be, yeah. I mean, it, again, having money... Like, now Larry David lives in, like, Martha's Vineyard, so maybe, he, you know, he's he's living a good life. But I, but to your point, the fact that it took him longer to get to, to the point to where he was the star and not just the creator and a writer of a show because, you know, he was the co-creator and a uh, longtime writer on Seinfeld. But it's not like people necessarily associate him with that show. It's Seinfeld show. No, but even even that, like, he was a comedian and a writer for a long time before he got that job. Oh, yeah. Worked on Saturday Night Live. In fact, the um, episode of Seinfeld where George quit but then freaked out and then he was convinced to go back to work and act out like nothing happened to see if, if they would do anything uh, actually happened to him because Larry David actually quit Saturday Night Live loudly walked out and then came back like over the next week after the weekend and just came back like nothing happened (laughs) and life just happened (laughs) wow that's cool yeah agreed agreed so my last one what is your last one simon cowell Mm. he just seems like the kind of person that like eats baby tears i get that um you have to Let's kind of look at it from his side, though. I mean, for what he does in American Idol or America's Got Talent or whatever, uh, that's for the cameras. But sometimes people do need to be told that you're not going to be in the Billboard Top 100. You know, I mean, if I went on American Idol and tried to sing, I'm going to have the negative reactions, uh, you know, come my way, even though I like singing. I like singing doesn't mean I'm ready for that. And I I can see an argument being made that he's just telling it like it is to these people. But to your point, you can do that without being a dick. Yeah, that's where I think he falls down. Yeah. And then the more he was a dick, the more popular and known he became. And so he just became more and more of a dick in order to... That's his brand, right? Unfortunately, it is. Uh, he's the surly guy, the British guy that you just want to smack. Um, it is what it is. Like, I, if anything, I would even say to the people that, that have gotten insulted by him, just he is, at the end of the day, still just one guy. He is. And sometimes you're going to get people that are dicks, <laughs> you know? Um, like, th- yeah, like, would I want to hang out with this guy? No, I wouldn't. You know, just just the way uh, he's cool with uh, treating certain people to, you know, be laughed at or whatever. I mean, because mm-hmm. the thing, like, I, and I've been guilty of watching these. The early episodes of American Idol, the first couple episodes of the season, usually have people that aren't going to make it and they're goofed on. Mm-hmm. You know, and like... <laughs> Still, though, those people still had the courage to get up there, go in front of the national TV cameras, and do their thing. Didn't work out. Wasn't good. You're not going to get a record contract, but at at least a big one. But they still had took the time to do that, and there there should be something that I I think should be commended for that. Yeah, that bravery. Yeah, courage. Yeah, and and having people like Simon Cowell going off with the harsh, harsh, unnecessary insults to people. Like, think of the people that are just a little shy and timid that have the talent, but don't necessarily want to hear that because sometimes there are plenty of examples in terms of like writing movies tv books songs whatever of people saying i don't like this this is absolute garbage and then they go to a separate person and say here is my project and they go i love it right like star wars universal studios rejected star wars yeah i mean they had a hit movie with american graffiti by george lucas and this could they thought Eh, doesn't matter what good work you did. You're not doing this movie. It's not going to work. Look what happened. Yeah, it worked. 
Yep. Talk about another rich motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes down to this, people. Eat the rich. Exactly. Shall I go on with my last one? Yeah, well, who's your last one? This is yet another guy with talent. If you've seen him act, you know he can act his ass off and, and, and do some great things. But just you hear story after story after story about him being just an absolute scumbag. Alec Baldwin. Mm. He's another person that loves to talk politics in public and ends up being a bad example for the political causes he supports. Yeah. You know, and which I, I think, especially with our country being what it is, is extremely detrimental because it makes people want to run to other to the other side, the right side that is not exactly working with the uh, sanity <laughs> these days. Right. At least on rare form. At least on on, on a on a big stage or whatever. But just. Just an absolute asshole, mean to his kids. Like there, there was like Kim Basinger, like during the divorce proceedings, released a, a phone message that he left his thirteen-year-old daughter, where he's calling her a pig. Yep. And, and stuff like that. Um, you have the situation with uh, that we've talked about on the show before, uh, the Rust situation, the movie the, that he made, where uh, there was an accident on set and one person ended up dying, which was not his fault. Uh, it's in terms of the person holding, you know, the, in, he was doing his job, but he was does have some fault as a producer. It's yeah, I mean, you know what I mean by that. Yeah. But, but just how he came about trying to defend himself just was sleazy slimy like he's not a good person at all and just the sooner people like him can go away the better you know and and again i'll be the first to say he is a talented actor yeah you cannot deny that but when you have someone that is so distasteful uh, as a human being that and so unrepentant in terms of him being an asshole and like it, 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 it blends over with his wife too because apparently his wife was born in new york but she speaks with an accent now mm. just because <laughs> you know i mean like I, uh, do you have any thoughts on that like Baldwin? no i mean he, i thought he was really funny as trump that's all i've got to say about alec baldwin uh, <sighs> A broken clock can be right twice a day, I guess. I know, yeah, right? And like I said, he is talented. He's, he's, he's very talented. It's, it's too it, bad that he's just a little a little off. Uh, he's an ass. He's an asshole. He's an asshole. Um, but interesting list altogether, I should say. And everybody out there, I'm sure, has some irrational hatred of a celebrity. We'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Oh my gosh, I'd love to hear who people hate. Yeah, I mean, maybe your dad will be like, that fucking Roy Rogers, bitch, <laughs> stupid trigger. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Who knows? But <laughs> Any other thoughts about celebrities you hate? No. Fuck them. <laughs> I mean, we probably could have done a hundred, and I would have been able to come up with them. Yeah, I mean, there there are plenty more. These were the ones that you know topped my list, and you know, again, I I, I tried to be fair, like with the Will Ferrell thing, you know, talking about because by all accounts, he is a nice guy off the screen, but uh, okay, hate him. All right. All right. So I think that will wrap us up here. Thank you all for listening. Each Monday, we'll have something in this podcast space to entertain your ear holes. Until we meet again, we bid you adieu. Good night. Bye. Subscribe to Friends Talking Nerdy on iTunes, the Google Play Music Store, as well as Spotify. Remember to support Friends Talking Nerdy on Patreon. Goodbye, darling.